Good morning. Welcome to Metro Hall, and thank you all for joining with us here today. Today, I'm here to talk about the future of the Louisville Metro Police Department and its leadership. Public safety is the first and greatest responsibility of city government. All of us have a role in improving public safety and preventing gun violence. And all of us expect that Louisville will ensure the public safety while respecting the rights of, that our people have under the Constitution and under our laws. Our police officers are the ones on the front lines of that work every day and every night. We have more than 1,000 sworn officers and civilian staff dedicated to the preserving the safety of people in Louisville, in every neighborhood of Louisville. Each of them risks their own safety, their own lives for us. So we can all be safe and feel safe, no matter where we live in our city. I appreciate their service, and I appreciate the fact that the last few years have been incredibly challenging for the men and women of LMPD, just as they have been for many across our city. And one of those challenges has been the lack of stability in the position of chief of police. My goal is for LMPD to be the best police department in America, the most trusted, the best tra trained, the most transparent. And to achieve that lofty goal, we must have stable and strong leadership. On June 25th, I named Paul Humphrey as interim chief of LMPD. I did that because he has an outstanding 18-year record with LMPD, where he rose up the ranks to serve in the command staff. He knows the department, he knows the officers, and he loves Louisville, his hometown. He's a straight shooter. He listens to others. He's willing to make difficult decisions. And he has earned the respect of our officers, our community, and me. He's committed to building and maintaining a culture within LMPD that is based on trust between the department and our citizens, and also trust among all of those who work at LMPD. And Paul shares my belief that to keep our people safe, we must embrace a comprehensive and detailed strategy, one that addresses the root causes of crime, one that prevents crimes before they happen, that we apprehend and convict those who commit crimes and enhance the chance for those who have secured their time, who have served their time, to re-enter society in a productive, peaceful way. Since June, I've seen up close how he's responded to the responsibilities and the opportunities of the chief's position. And what I've seen is that Paul Humphrey is tough and fair thoughtful and decisive. He understands what good police work requires and demands of our officers. So he does everything that he can to support them. At the same time, Paul stresses accountabilities for officers, his command staff, and himself. He has communicated well with his team and with the public through countless media interviews and countless meetings with community members all over our entire city. He understands, just like I do, that every police officer, every member of Louisville Metro government, we are all accountable to the people of Louisville. LMPD is in the process of making significant improvements, recruiting the next generation of officers and recruiting a lot of them, strengthening the trust between officers and the community, finalizing and then complying with a federal consent decree and more. To build on this positive momentum, we need a leader, a leader with the skills, experience, temperament, commitment, and, and passion that Paul Humphrey has demonstrated. He has earned my trust, and he has earned the trust of our community. And that is why I am so proud to announce that effective immediately, I am naming Paul Humphrey as chief of the Louisville Metro Police Department. Mm -hmm. 
I have confident, confidence, confidence in Chief Humphrey's future, LMPD's future, and our city's future. He will provide much needed stability, while at the same time providing that proactive leadership that LMPD must have. Chief Humphrey is a proven leader who I believe can chart a strong future for LMPD, build momentum, and make our city safer, stronger, and healthier. Thank you, Chief Humphrey. Thank you for your service to our city and for stepping up again, once again for Louisville, Kentucky. We'll have more announcements about improvements at LMPD in the days and weeks ahead. We'll also hold an official swearing-in ceremony on September 27th at the Kentucky International Convention Center for Chief Humphrey and many other officers who Chief Humphrey and I are promoting. Expectations are high for this new leadership team. Our community needs a strong, stable, and effective police department. They all know that's the expectation. And I'm confident that the new LMPD command staff under Chief Humphrey's leadership will answer that call. And right now, I am so proud to introduce the Chief of LMPD, Paul Humphrey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I appreciate the uh, kind remarks. Um, on the 27th, we're gonna promote numerous people, not just me, and this will be one of the largest command staff movements in the history of LMPD. We are going to move, promote, or change 16 of 24 command staff members. We will also be promoting five sergeants, three lieutenants, three majors, three assistant chiefs, and two deputy chiefs. That's a huge amount of movement, which means there's a huge opportunity for growth and improvement. This is about taking care of other people, is ultimately what this job is about. Being promoted to deputy chief will be Emily McKinley and Ryan Bates. Being promoted to the assistant chief of patrol will be Donnie Burbrink. The assistant chief of accountability and improvement will be Brian Kerger. The assistant chief of the administration will be Corey Robinson. The major over the administrative services division will be James McGahey. The major over the performance division will be Glenn Parkus. The major over the fourth division patrol will be Daniel Lewis. All of them come with an extensive history and shining resume within LMPD. Two other majors that I would like to announce will be the major over training will be Nikolai Jilic. Nick Jilic was a sergeant with LMPD and has recently served as the commissioner of the Department of Criminal Justice Training. He is the perfect person at the perfect time to come back and lead our training division. I'll also make note of a notable change that we are undertaking is you are all used to the Special Investigations Division, which contains both PIU, the Public Integrity Unit, as well as the Professional Standards Unit, PSU. We will be bifurcating those into two separate divisions. We're doing this in order to increase oversight and accountability within those units to make sure that we have close, close management and supervision over such important investigations. Major Eric Wampler will be transferring from the 8th Division to the Professional Standards Division to oversee those investigations. And coming back to us is retired Sergeant Travis Hatchell, which will take over what was formerly the PIU and will take over as the Special Investigations Division Commander. This is a great group of leaders, and I'm ex extremely excited to talk about them more, uh, and we'll have plenty of opportunity to do that. But this is about the team that keeps this, this city safe. And there's all kinds of stories I can tell you. Just the other day, um, Kenny Allen, 4th Division Patrol Officer, utilizing Flock, the technology that we have to, to find stolen cars, gets behind a stolen car. And years ago, we would have just chased that car. We would have tried to stop it and just chase that car, but we recognize how dangerous that is to the community. And so he gathered resources, called uh, through the radio, got more patrol officers from the 4th Division, the 5th Division, uh, the 1st Division, special operations, and ultimately ended up uh, taking into custody people without any incident. Uh, just the other day, last week, we had a hostage situation where the 2nd Division responded to a domestic violence incident, located the victim, was able to get the hostage negotiators on the phone, with the help of the community, were able to figure out where she was, 
uh, and then negotiators and SWAT were able to successfully rescue her without any incident. It's this type of coordination, it's this type of work that gets this, this thing done. It is not any of us standing up here, it is not any of the command staff sitting over there. It is the average police officer that's out on the street working with the community every day that gets this done. And that's what this command staff and that's what the city is going to be about, is making sure that officers work well with you to keep you safe and protect constitutional rights. We are one team dedicated to one mission, and that's keeping you safe and protecting your rights. You've got officers like uh, Officer Brinkley, who was involved in the incident at Walmart, was recognized this weekend as the Crisis Intervention Team Officer of the Year this past weekend. That is an outstanding, amazing achievement for him, right? You've got uh, young guys like O'Shea Rogers in the fourth, who was involved in an officer-involved shooting that you know about, who sees a guy with a rifle and, and just bravely runs after him, and I think we're all jealous of his athletic ability, but maintained his poise and composure under circumstances that many of us wouldn't. You've got Robin Oates, who's the director of our records unit, and all of her people who take in all of the thousands of reports, incident reports that the community reports to us and make sure that those are done properly and completed properly, not just so that we have good stats, but just so that the detectives get the right information to conduct their investigations the right way and take care of people. Right? There's all kinds of people, and it's nameless numbers of people. Gerald Tyson, a retired Army veteran who came to the LMPD after being at Corrections, served overseas, is now a sergeant in the 2nd Division helping young officers on late watch, had opportunities to go other places and decided to stay here and help young officers. Roderick Beasley, a sergeant who also served in the Army and is taking care of detectives in the 8th Division, making sure they do their job the right way to take care of our, our citizens in the 8th Division. This job is about the 11 to 1,200 people that are here. It's about the thousands that, that came before us who will never have their names mentioned, who will never stand up at a press conference, and that nobody will ever talk about on the news, but they go out as quiet professionals and do this job every day. This job is about them, and it's about them taking care of you. <clears throat> it is humbling. It is truly humbling to have the opportunity to represent them. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chief Humphrey. As Chief Humphrey said, he is focused on ensuring that LMPD is one team, one team that is working towards the same goal to keep our city safe, one team that is working together to support one another, adhering to the values and expectations that the chief, that myself, and everyone in our city have, and also knowing that we are one city. We are a large city with many different neighborhoods, many different people, but we all want what's best for each other just as Chief Humphrey does for his hometown, for Louisville, for LMPD, for this entire city. I'm so excited about our future, and I'm excited that Chief Humphrey is the chief of LMPD. And with that, we are happy to take any questions from members of the media. Roberto. So the question was, what is the plan for improving recruitment? Because we know that's been a point of focus. Uh, we are in the process, again, I've, I've talked about a strategic crime plan. You've heard me speak about that before that will be uh, coming out soon in conjunction with the mayor's overall safety plan for the city. Uh, we are working on a strategic recruiting plan and they, they have a draft in place, uh, but we have to be open to everything, recognizing that um, recruitment is not the same as it was when I was coming on, right? We had thousands and thousands of people putting in for 40 spots. Um, and we have to be much more targeted. Uh, we see recruiting has changed in the, in, in, you know, across the uh, job market, not just for LMPD or not just for policing. Uh, public service in particular has taken a hit. So we have to be open to looking at different ways of recruiting that we haven't been in the past. Uh, we can't get in caught in the selection process. It, we have to really focus on reaching out, finding those individuals, and explaining to them how great service is, how great this job is, and making it really good for the people that are here so that they have that one-to-one -one connection that says, hey, come work with me. No, this has nothing to do with previous command staff. Uh, much of the, the command staff moves are internal. So obviously we're promoting several people due to retirements and, and people moving on. 
uh, but a lot of the internal movement is about putting the right people in the right place. You got to be in the right seats on the bus. And I want to make sure that um, people understand that we are going to look at the talent that we have. We're going to look at the dedication that we have and make sure that everybody's on the same page. So this is about putting them in the right, the right places, not necessarily moving people in or out. Well, the question was, uh, what makes me the right person to drive cultural change if I've been in the culture for all of these years? And I think that's exactly part of it, right? Is that I understand the people here. I'm part of the people here. I'm as dedicated um, to the people here, not just on the department, but in the city, as anybody have, ever has been. Um, I think to, to improve a place, you have to be part of that place. Uh, improvement from the outside rarely works. Right, I think we've been in a position for years, um, particularly the last four or five years, where improvement has been attempted through chastisement. Um, that has never gotten, it's never gotten me to be better. You can call me names all day long, you can tell me how horrible I am all day long, but that's never caused me to improve. It's people having faith in me and knowing that I can do a good job, and LMPD in the city needs people to have faith in them. And I've got faith in these officers of LMPD. They're outstanding, they're very hardworking, and they just need somebody to believe in them. And sometimes that's enough. And what changes do you immediately plan to put into place? So like I said, we're working on a, a strategic crime plan, but that's part of a bigger plan, right? The movement of the command staff is a, is a huge change. Like I said, that's gonna be a, as big of a shakeup as we've had in a long time. Uh, but what a lot of this is about is, I've said this before, I think unfortunately we found ourselves in a situation, I've learned all too well uh, in the last couple of months, that we can go from issue to issue or crisis to crisis and we end up as the product of those crises, as opposed to having a vision for where we should be and making sure that we manage those crises in, in alignment with what our vision is to achieve the mission that we want. So having plans in place to make sure that recruiting is done the way that we want to strategically, even though we might have budget or personnel changes, that our crime plan gets across to everyone, every officer and every community member, so that they know their, their role and impact on this, so that as crime trends change, we can make adjustments that still focus on the same things. Being able to do that across the board is going to be very important. So how we, how we communicate the mission to everyone within LMPD and within the community is going to be vital to this. Mayor, what, what is the uh, status of the consent decree? Does this move align with the goal of that decree? Well, Chief Humphrey has been very engaged uh, since the very beginning in, in working with the Department of Justice and prior to becoming interim chief in June, uh, he was leading LMPD's efforts in the negotiations with the Department of, of Justice. So uh, Chief Humphrey is, is the right person to lead the department as we finalize the consent decree and then implement the consent decree as well over the coming years. Uh, right now, we are in very intensive discussions with the DOJ. Uh, our team, uh, which is members of my administration, the county attorney's office, LMPD, uh, met for two days last week with the DOJ. They're meeting three days this week. Uh, they are, everyone is working in good faith as quick as possible to try to wrap up those negotiations uh, as soon as we can to finalize the consent decree. Uh, we want that to happen very soon. They want it to happen very soon. We, we all want to get it as right as possible. Uh, and so this fall, I'm hoping that that is concluded. The more I got to work with Chief Humphrey, uh, the more I realized that this was the right choice, that the right person was doing this job. Uh, from our very first conversation, when uh, after I called then interim Chief Humphrey and told him what we were getting ready to do, uh, and in literally a matter of hours, he was prepared for that job. And then in, in the days, uh, our conversation in those initial days, and as it continued over the weeks and couple of months since, one of the things, back to your, your question also that relates to this, is Chief Humphrey is very focused on communication, on communicating internally within LMPD, on communications with my administration, he and I, our communication, 
and communication between LMPD and the public. Even if it might be things that we don't want to talk about, that we wish were a different way, dealing with reality, dealing with the facts, and willing to make difficult decisions, I think is incredibly important for the leadership of LMPD, for any important leadership role. And it became clear to me that uh, that was one of the many things and one of the many traits that Chief Humphrey uh, possessed. You know, initially, I, I definitely did not go in with any um, decision back in June, uh, but that became clear as, as the weeks and months progressed. Um, I'm, I'm excited to take on this role. Uh, obviously, I, I got here under unforeseen circumstances. This was not part of the life plan. Uh, I, I felt we were in a spot where um, I'm eligible to retire in two years. Uh, I, I thought that that's where this was going to go, but now I'm going to be able to uh, hopefully lead this uh, as long as uh, his administration is here for hopefully six years. And um, we lead into the future and get this done. Can you repeat that? I'm, I'm sorry. What's your message to the citizens of Louisville as the new chief after seeing multiple people lead this department in the last few years? So the message to the community after seeing multiple people lead this department in the last few years. Um, we can get caught in looking back a little too much sometimes. We have to learn from our history, and there's a lot of lessons, uh, both good and bad, that we can learn from the past. Uh, we have to be forward thinking. We have to look at where we want to be and focus on that. We're not going to be perfect. Uh, we're going to have inconsistencies. And, you know, the mayor brought up a word that I value very much. It's respect. If we can agree on the mission, right, that's keeping people safe and protecting the Constitution. If we can agree on the mission, we can disagree all day on how to get there, right, and still respect each other at the end of the day. I'm looking at a couple faces in this room who I know have absolutely 100 percent disagreed with how we have tried to get there. But I think we've been able to maintain respect for each other in our efforts to accomplish it. So um, this is about looking forward, not looking back. One more question. Can you explain your decision to divide the capital investigations division into public and government and public and Can you talk a little more about why you did that? Yes, ma'am. So the decision to divide what formerly was a special investigations division, which encompassed uh, public integrity, which uh, worked uh, criminal cases involving uh, police officers as well as uh, any other members of Metro government, and they worked all of our officer-involved shootings, uh, and separating that from professional standards, which is an administrative side, so they do all of our internal affairs investigations. Uh, those inv types of investigations have to be separate because a, a concurrent uh, administrative investigation cannot be used in a criminal prosecution. Um, those cases over the years have become much more complicated, much more involved, and I want to make sure that we have as close a level of oversight as we can and as many hands involved in that um, that are talented, that are dedicated to the cause, that can make sure that those investigations both stay separate and run appropriately uh, at the same time. And I think giving that, that internal higher level of, of um, oversight without someone being on both sides of those investigations, overseeing both sides of those investigations, uh, is a little safer for all of us. It's safer for the officers to make sure that they're, they're protected in their rights in these investigations. It's safer for the community to make sure that we don't make mistakes accidentally because we have access to information on both sides of these investigations. Um, and frankly, the workload has changed. Uh, the workload for that position is absolutely tremendous uh, on both of those sides. And Obviously, it's not going to get easier. Um, our, our oversight mechanisms under the consent decree are going to be high, more highly scrutinized. Um, and so I want to make sure that we have a higher level of management, accountability, and leadership in those units. Thank you. I just want to say one, one, no, you, that's for one final question. One final. Why was well, we didn't initially conduct a national search right at the very beginning because it was clear with uh, the challenges that were going on at LMPD at the time back in June. Uh, we needed Chief Humphrey, we needed everyone on the command staff, we needed L everyone at LMPD focused on the ongoing work 
of the department. There's far too much going on throughout the community every day to take our eye off the ball, and so we needed them to focus on the ongoing work. Also, in, in the wake of, of some of the news that happened in June, uh, we commissioned two independent investigations that needed to near completion uh, before I had enough information and all of the, the needed confidence to make a final decision. Uh, but in that time, as that stuff was happening, as the ongoing work continued, as those independent investigations were nearing an end, it became very clear to me that we had the right person in the job for the job. And I should mention that I have been briefed. Uh, one of those two independent re reports is now complete. Um, and the second one, I have been briefed by David Beyer on his now completed investigation and his final written report will be released by the end of this week. I just want to make one final comment, which I think you can hear from the Chief's comments, and that is LMPD is going to be really focused on improvement, on service to this community. But LMPD cannot do this job on its own. We need the entire community to work together in partnership to truly make our city safer, stronger, and healthier. We have council people here with us today, like <clears throat> Councilwoman Tammy Hawkins, Councilman Khalil Bachan. We have our county attorney, Mike O'Connell. We have pastors and leaders of the community like Reverend Elliott. We must all work together, elected officials, members of the faith community, community leaders, neighborhood leaders, business owners, engaged citizens of our community, all helping one another, all striving to make Louisville the best and safest city that it can be. And that is one of the reasons I was so thrilled when Chief Humphrey suggested that we have a public promotion ceremony, not just for him, but for the entire new command staff. And again, we invite the public, we invite everyone, if we are going to continue to strengthen trust between LMPD and our community, between our administration and our community, we all need to be together. We all need to get to know one another. We need to support one another. And so we invite the entire community to join us for the official promotion ceremony on September 27th at the Kentucky International Convention Center. Thank you all very much. Hey, Reverend Ellen.